You're welcome back to the show. Well, many of us have been expecting to hear from Parliament on, on what the committee, the appointment committee's verdict on those they've been vetting has or has been so far. Joseph Opokugaku, like I said, joins me from Parliament where he brings an update on that matter. Joseph, it's good to see you. How are you doing? I'm fantastic. Yes, sir. Great. Let's look at what happened in Parliament. Were they able to approve approve the, the those they vetted? No, they didn't. And so today, for example, the appointments committee did not sit per the schedule. The continuation of their sitting will be from tomorrow when four nominees, including the minister designate for moni the, you know, monitoring and evaluation, mm. um, Dr. Akuto Usefri, will be appearing before them. So that will be happening tomorrow. And so today, on the other paper, which is the outline of activities that the House is supposed to undertake during the day, mm. there was the mention that a, a document should be the report of the appointments committee on the 13 nominees mm. will be brought to the floor of the house and a report on the 30 nominees on, or on, those on, that they vetted on, on the 13 on the 13, 13 nominees right. that they vetted out of the 46 or so nominees yeah. who have been announced by the president the committee has been able to vet the first 13, 13. list that actually got to parliament and so they finished that that was uh, two days ago okay. uh, actually yesterday and the report on that is ready so the indication was that it will be brought before you know the house the general house for discussion and then approval the understanding is that when any such report comes it's supposed to be laid on the floor of the house mm. and then there's a 48 hour duration that's supposed to lapse before then they will debate it okay. but on on the document the plan was that the document would be laid today they will sidestep that rule that requires that they are supposed to wait for 40 Eight, eight hours, hours and go ahead and do the debate today mm. and give the approval before close of day today that's what was indicated in the document but around two o'clock by then they had done other things um the member of parliament for futu gave a statement mm. on um, the situation in um, uh, gambia with regards to uh, adam abaro taking over power uh, you know the other activities that were undertaken they constituted a number of committees of the house they constituted those who will be representing the House at the ECOWAS Parliament and also at the African Union Parliament. Okay. And that's at 2 o'clock, they were supposed to approve the Appointment Committee's uh, report mm. by the Majority Leader, uh, Osei Chairman Sabunsu, and the Minority Leader, uh, Harun Idrisu, indicated that the report from the Joe Osei Wusu led committee is ready, it's been handed over to leadership. They are studying it to make some input before then they will allow him to bring it onto the floor of the House tomorrow. Okay, so we're expecting the report to be made public tomorrow. Exactly. But that's when they, they start sitting again tomorrow. They, they will start sitting again tomorrow. So this is what will happen. Um, they will begin the day on the floor of the house itself. Okay. So um, it's likely the appointments committee would begin sitting sometime after midday. So, so will they be excused from uh, normal uh, the normal day in parliament? Yes. They after, will be excused. Most likely after the chairman you know has presented the report to the general house and the approval has been given okay. and then when they move on to other businesses then they would excuse members of the appointments committee so that then they can go continue the vetting but Harun Idrisson has been explaining why they decided to push the approval of the nominees to tomorrow and not today we can take a listen to it okay let's watch it now with the leadership it is true that the report have been made available to leadership it's important that, in fairness, members have copies, peruse them well, and adequately present, prepare themselves for a debate on the issues and for its adoption tomorrow. So in order that, we will urge the first deputy speaker and the committee clerks to ensure that at least within the next uh, few hours, subject to those, uh, there has been some recommendations in some aspects of the report for improvement to capture some of the issues. It will be important that we take this tomorrow. It's a very important motion, and members should have uh, sufficient uh, time to study the report of the Appointments Committee, but certain that tomorrow the first batch of ministers uh, will have the concentration of this House. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. been in consultation with the minority leader, who is a ranking member on the committee, and also had some discussions with the chairman of the committee. The ranking member has given an indication that he's perused the draft report, and he has made some observations for some amendments. And um, I guess, in order not to give the impression 
that the House is being stampeded into taking this, the decision on the first batch of the President's nominees, I guess we could stand it down and do it tomorrow. Uh, we have consulted sufficiently, and I believe we're able to bring the matter to a closure tomorrow on the first batch of the present nominees. That's what's uh, happened in, in Parliament. So we know that uh, everything is set for tomorrow for, for us to get both get the report and then continue with the vetting exactly. of the rest. Exactly. That okay. Happening tomorrow. okay. Yes. Let's talk about Gambia. They mentioned Gambia today. Uh, you said it was put on the floor of Parliament. What, yes. what's, what came of it? So um, Alexander Afenyo Markins, who is the member of Parliament for Efutu, mm. uh, delivered a statement on the floor. And the, the statement had two major points. Uh, he was first of all commending ECOWAS for its intervention in Gambia and helping resolve the situation right from the military threats all mm. the way to the political negotiations mm. that eventually got President Yair Jame to step down, you know. So he delivered a statement on that. A number of members of parliament um, supported the statement and equally acknowledged uh, the, the efforts that ECOWAS had done to help resolve the situation. But then there was a controversial bit. The member of parliament for Adaklu, Kwame Agboja, raised the issue about the concerns he, he has with the um, government not informing parliament, parliament before going ahead to Deploy. authorize the deployment of 205 of uh, Ghana's military guys to Gambia. Uh, he raised that, but uh, the speaker really didn't allow him to really elaborate on the point. Uh, the explanation means that we were supposed to be contributing to the statement and not to be doing a general debate on the issue. So that was actually short. But subsequently, I had a conversation with some of the members on the um, minority side Nusa Fuseni, for example, think mm. that that's actually what should have been the case. They should have come to Parliament, and nonetheless, they didn't get to Parliament for prior approval. They are expecting that going forward, whoever ends up getting the nod as Minister for Foreign Affairs and also Minister for Defence, those two people should come back to the House and, okay. in his words, right the wrong that was done in the case of the prior approval not being given. So that's the expectation of the majority side and okay. then the Akufado led administration. So the, the issue about Gambia will be resurrected, I believe, uh, after approval the, of those ministerial That's nominees. the expectation, except that the guys on the, well, the, the members of parliament on the majority side disagree with the claim that prior approval should have been sought from parliament. Alexander okay. Fenimakins, for example, made the point that as far as his understanding of the law is concerned, the president being the executive president has the authority and the mandate to authorize troops to any part of the world without prior approval. So they clearly don't agree with the minority, and they have the huge numbers. But we'll see how that pans out. In, in Parliament. Thank you very much, Joseph. Joseph Opoku Gakpo is our parliamentary correspondent, and he's been there bringing us up to speed on what's happening. We know that tomorrow um, the appointment committee will be sitting, and they will bring us uh, a report on the 13 people that they've vetted so far, and then they will continue with the vetting process. We also do know that uh, the issue of Gambia came up in Parliament today, and you heard him and the explanation that was given. Well, it's been almost two months since the elections ended, but there are still some issues concerning the payment of presiding officers. Signals picked up by Joe News indicate that some presiding officers are yet to receive payment for their services during the election period. Kwabana Dako is a presiding officer for one of the electoral areas of Ayawaso East constituency. He joins me now in the studio with some details. Hello, Mr. Dako, you're welcome. Thank you. My name is Kwabana Dako. Dako, Kwabana Dako. Uh, uh, sorry for that. And That's okay. this is your apologies. Now, let's talk about your situation. It's been, what, uh, two months since yes. you were expecting um, your... Not two months not two months but since the elections were over mm. we were expecting that by now we would have been paid our okay. allowances but um the returning officer for the ayahuasca east is called mr azila each time i call him he said he's talking to one mr rashid okay. and i want to use this medium this media house to find out when exactly the ec will pay allowances to you what's what's really were the terms of reference what was the agreement from the beginning well, uh, concerning when we'll be paid, it was not part of the agreement. We, really? Yes. How did you then, how do you get into a transaction like that? I mean, how do you work and not ask for what you, when you're going to be paid? We're told we'll, pay, we'll be paid um, shortly after 
the elections are over. Okay. But exactly when we're not promised. Were you given a document? Were no, there pro we're, proper we're, documentation? we were not given any do document. So, we so then how any. do you prove, if you should go to any uh, competent court of jurisdiction, how do you prove that the, the, the EC owes you? Well, my coming here is just to find out, using this media house, when will be paid. And I want to find out if um, monies were allocated f to pay... Um, Money was obviously allocated. Yes, but I, I mean, I want to find the, the out where the the the, the, the um, budget of the EC yes. has got. I mean, has gone through Parliament. Everybody knows yes. that there is a budget, so yes. definitely yes. Uh, there was yes. money for it. So it is up to the, the the employee to make sure that you you went into the appropriate agreement. So you've been following up, you said. Yes, with I've the been calling Mr. Officers. He's a returning officer for Ayawa East constituency. What's the name again? Mr. Azila. Mr. Azila, what's yes. the full name, please? Well, I don't know the full name. Okay, but so I Mr. Azila yes. is a uh, returning, returning officer, officer for the Ayawa East. Ayawa East. Yes, for this Okay, and you called him and he said... Yes, and I have called him a number of times, and he says he's talking to Mr. Rashid. Who is Mr. Rashid? Uh, well, I don't know his designation, but I know he works with the EC. Okay. Yes. So, th what did they say? Uh, he keeps on promising me Mr. Rashid is working on it, but I just want to find out when exactly... Um, electoral offices are mm. going to be paid. Okay. Yes. And I, 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 what do you, what do, what really do you intend to do from here? Apart from using the uh, using media houses, for instance, to ask questions, to put questions out there. For in the for, open. for for now, mm. um, I would just want to use this media house to find out from the EC. Uh, my next line of action. Um, uh, have you got? Have you tried to get in touch with the EC yourself? Uh, no, I haven't. The EC offices are quite no, close. No, I, I haven't. Why not? I'll go there. I'll go there. But I don't think um, I, I would offend the law if I use this medium. Yes. Mm, you obviously won't. How much do they owe you? Well, we were not told exactly how much they were going to pay us. But I believe it's in the region of 400 Ghana cities for presiding officers. 400 cities? Yes. For Presiding everything? For, yes. Okay. So they owe you about 400. 400, CDs. let me say so. And, and it's not just you. How many of you uh, have not been paid? Well, I cannot say how many of us have not been paid. But I know for certain that those I work with, none of us has been paid, have, have been paid. How many were you? Um, six. Six of you? Yes. Okay. Well, I believe that the, we, we will try to contact the EC on this. Uh, of course, they've got a spokesperson who uh, is open to the media. So what we can do is to speak to the EC uh, uh, on, on this. But let's see if we can get uh, Mr. Japasu on the line. Eric Japasu is spokesperson or the PRO for the Electoral Commission. Hello, Mr. Japasu. Hello. Thank you very much for your time um, uh, here on The Pulse. I've got in the studio here with me. Um, one Mr. Dakwa, who is uh, who was a uh, presiding officer at Ayawaso East, he's complaining uh, of non-payment of their services to the country during the election. Thank you very much, and, and good afternoon. Good afternoon to our listeners. Um, I would have I would have wished Mr. Dakwa had gone to the district office of the electoral commission too to inquire or to find out about the state of the uh, allowances. In fact, they haven't said that. It is true that they haven't yet been paid. They haven't been paid because we are waiting for the final release of um, our budget from the Ministry of uh, Finance um, to effect payments to our other stakeholders, not only the election officials, but to our vendors and then our other service uh, providers. And, uh, I think this matter came up for discussion. All the regions and the districts have been notified to let officials know that we appreciate their patience and understanding, and that as soon as the money is released from the Ministry of Finance, all such payments, particularly the payment of uh, election officials, will be effected. And as we speak, government has even the Finance Ministry has even released money to the Electoral Commission for the part of the money to the commission for the payment of these outstanding allowances. And it has been processed. 
So in due course, they'll be receiving their money. In due course, you say. Mr. Zekpasu, what were the terms of agreement you had with the electoral officials that you engaged as EC? The terms has always been the same, that at the end of the exercise, you know, it is a process, at the end of the process, um, they will be paid allowances which are predetermined and stated in their contract uh, letters or letters of uh, employment, which all of them have. Um, and it doesn't actually specify a date for the payment of uh, the allowances because we know the processes which go through or the processes which are involved. Ma Ma Mr. Zekwasu, sorry to cut you there. Is that standard practice? Yes, yeah, standard practice to the extent that monies for um, activities of the commission are always released in tranches. The last tranche being the monies which are released for post-election activities, which includes the payment of uh, allowances on all other outstanding commission, uh, financial commitments. So when are you going to pay them? Uh, it will be difficult for me to give a date, but I want to assure him that it shouldn't be too long because um, as of last week, uh, some amount of money was released to the commission, and I know finance and accounts are working hard on it, as we speak right now, for the money to be released to the regions and then the districts. So I'm not yet in a position to give a date, but it, is, it shouldn't be too long. It shouldn't be too long. Mm. Mr. Lekwasi, it shouldn't be too long, you say, but isn't it wrong that we don't have an idea how long it will take for these people to be paid? Now, I understand that you say the finances come in tranches, but... At least we should have a timeline that we're working with. That, I believe, should be standard. Yeah, we are working. Yes, yes. It is not wrong. I don't, the way you put it, it is not wrong. Um, it should be a matter of mutual understanding. And I know most of them who have worked with the commission for a very long time, and most of them have, appreciate what goes into the payment of the allowances. That's why I'm saying that I would have wished Mr. Dakwa had gone to the district offices to seek mm -hmm. clarification. I'm telling you, I cannot give a deadline. You called right. me right now. There's a timeline. We are working within a timeline. Yes, the money has come to the commission. It is being processed. But okay. finance and accountants and accounts will have to tell me this very day it goes okay. to the regions, then it goes to the various Then it goes districts. to the regions. Mr. Yeah. Hold on. I've got him here with me. I'll just find out from him whether he's contacted the district uh, offices. No. He said you have no contact. I have not. Okay, so perhaps if you had done that, you would have ha have an idea. Well, and I've said that I don't think it's wrong coming here either. It's um, not. At least we've got we've clarified the issue. He said okay. uh, the Ministry of Finance has released part of the money. What one mm -hmm. of the things I had wanted to find out is is the money in the accounts or they are yet to receive. And when the, is it coming? Yeah, yes. What were you, are you and how much? Yes. How much? Yes, exactly. Mr. Zakwasu, yes. you you can't yeah. tell us for sure when it is coming, but at least can we know how much you're paying them? Before then, let me come to this. I want to tell Mr. Dakwa that it is wrong. It is wrong. It is, uh, it is wrong in our scheme of things, in our relationship with our election officials, in the sense that the district offices are the first points of contact, the interface between ourselves and then the, our stakeholders. Mr. Dakwa and co sent the applications to the district offices. They were interviewed at the district offices. Some stipends have already been paid to them. If he engaged in the registration, exhibition and all the related activities never at any point did they contact the head office to get clarification about the allowance okay so the expectation is that issues of this nature must first be cleared with the district office and if he had gone there he would have saved all of us this time of this explanation which in any case we have prepared a release which is coming out very soon or this anyway okay. but having said that the important thing is that the money is with the commission the amount is determined by what you did during the exercise I don't know what Mr. Adapa did. If he was a presiding mm. officer, per his appointment yes. letter, he knows exactly the amount of money he is due. And he's to be assured that that money will be paid to him. Okay. okay. Unless he wants me to tell the whole world that Mr. Adapa is earning 500 Ghana at the end of his job as a presiding officer. Well, we'll say very big thank you to you, Mr. Jopasu. Uh, for, your, for, your, for your time, and we believe that Welcome. they'll get their money as soon as possible. Mr. Dakwa, so you've heard him there. That is yes. the spokesperson for the EC. Uh, he says that the money is being processed. Thank you, sir. Okay, so good for you. You've got a uh, solution to your problem. You. Mr. Dakwa is one of um, uh, the presiding uh, officers for Ayawaso East during the election. Um, they'll be getting their money soon.